Come to the Lord and ask the correct words. Yeah, great. After being here now, I love the view, uh, we came out. It was a lovely time, a very awesome event. Thank you for supporting us. Yep. But what we're going to do is a similar format to our last meeting. Um, Jordan's going to give an update of the plan, and then, um, then uh, Kevin is going to do an update for Helpful, and then Diane May from RMD mm -hmm. is going to do an update for the county. So. Without further ado, we'll turn it over to Jordan Hara, he's the PGB plant manager. Jordan? All right. Thanks everyone for coming out. So a few things, uh, of course we completed the access road, um, and I'll go over that in a bit. Um, we have uh, continued ongoing work with all the generation, and the generators and everything in the plant. There's a lot of things going on uh, due to the corrosion issues we've had, so it's a big job. The turbines are rebuilding generators are rebuilding. Uh, so it's a lot of work, a lot of contractors on site. We probably average about maybe 40 to 50 contractors being on site, giving us a hand on everything um, from all over the United States. Plus we got also hands from um, our other plants in the mainland helping us out too. So a lot of people out here. Um, as for the well field, we're still um, assessing the wells and also the resource. So that's ongoing. Uh, we got bunch of our equipment on site, so that's ongoing currently. We did finish, like I said, on the last meeting, our first water well, um, and we did start assessing on KS14, and we're looking to move to the next well. Uh, working with Helco on our service connection, uh, so we kind of started the first phase on that, and we're continuing working with them on that. Everything's been going pretty good with that. Um, we did open April 1st, was the beginning when we opened up the road to the neighborhood below us. Um, we have experienced some pros and cons <laughs> on the road access. Um, the first two weeks went extremely well, no obstacles at all, and then uh, after that we did have, we opened up the hours because we had to draw the hours, you know, for access, and we did open it up for 22 hours out of 24 um, on Wednesday. And then Thursday we had a guy like sneaking in a guy in the trunk of the car. <laughs> we have had, um, you know, multiple experiences with our security on um, unhappy situations with, you know, some people and uh, swearing and yelling at our security. So it, you know, it's a tough situation. The majority is good, you know, and, and we do want to maintain the road access and keep those people going in who all have um, a good experience and good view on everything and outlook but it is been has been difficult dealing with a few so i mean we you know we're continuing to work on that um we will actually enforce more stringently so we don't ruin it for the good people going in is that you know when we do have uh, incidents like that we will um, cancel waivers it's just unnecessary and you know it's, it's going to ruin it for the other good people going in so the gentleman that did breach our security um, those waivers did get denied since then um, because it's unacceptable behavior to, to try to do that. So, And it was unfortunate because I just talked with him Wednesday and he was the reason why I opened up the hours and then <laughs> Thursday he was, he was doing that, you know. Unfortunate, but... So that's some of the obstacles and then, you know, we have a lot of need or want for um, contractors to get into, which we're looking at because um, that's another uh, issue of liability. Um, more paperwork for us and um, by all means for the residents who showed up you know we want to notify them and we'll try to keep in touch too with more on the residents but to notify them that you know we're working on it and our efficiency may not be the fastest on getting you know adjustments to the waivers when needed but um, you know we are in in state of recovery on the plant so it is we do have different priorities during the day and it is hard to kind of you know focus a lot of attention on that and it does take a lot of time um, Ann and Michael Gornick, they spent a lot of time in the very beginning collecting all of the waivers and putting that together and they didn't realize how much is involved in that and so, you know, and I think one of her words was, uh, what is it, um, thankless work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, and I was like, oh yeah, you can do that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, we, you know, we want to do the best we can to help everybody out, but you know, it's, it's a difficult situation. A few people make it harder too, so 
we're working on looking at opening up more for the contractors and whatnot. We have been kind of working um, with a few that already are in, uh, is in our system, but you know, it's it's a really a lot of liability issue and paperwork. So we're working on that. Other than that, so we got my. Thanks, Jordan. Kevin will be next. And then once all our presentations are done, we'll break up into our group, our group areas. And then if there's uh, further additional detailed questions that, that folks have, um, we'll be happy to take them at that time. So we'll turn it over to Kevin Walchick, Helco. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thanks, Jordan, for bringing up some of the things that I was supposed to cover on my list. Um, but first and foremost, you know, uh, we do still have a rebuild agreement with PGV. Uh, the PUC issued a letter to Helco on May 8th, May 9th, um, stating that you know we will submit an application for the transmission line um, and hold public hearing. So that's that's in a, in effect right now. Uh, PGV, as Jordan had said, had requested service from Hawaii Electric Light as a customer. So. We started that process, installed the service poles, installed the poles to serve PGV, and uh, are working at trying to get them serviced. Now, this is important probably for the customers that live east of PGV's property, because what that does is it establishes a line that allows us to connect to and bring service down to the customers that got access to that area. And that's important. I know that is important. It's important for us and it's important for the residents. Um, we're keeping the PUC informed and we continue to work with PGB and we will uphold any decisions that come down from the, from the PUC. And that's pretty much where we're at. So, you know, we're paying for that service ourselves and so you know if we can branch off we'll branch off of our paid service to the neighborhood not being in the neighborhood but you know off of, off of our service pool so <laughs> then, not, not, not costing anybody else discount? money but us <laughs> so we'll move on uh, to our next speaker Diane Lee from research and development with the county update thank you heard me before recovery is a long process but it's got ongoing efforts it's got you know, action steps that are immediate and near term, and then we we'll continue to um, work on the longer term. So some of the near term actions we're working on, um, getting people home, you know, we're trying to support that as much as possible, getting people back to work or, you know, helping lift up their businesses. Um, we want to continue to take care of the keiki and the kapuna. Um, you know, we've got some um, expanded summer fund programs coming up this summer and other, initiatives like that. Um, we also need to build the capacity um, for getting resources out to the community. So that's an important component. So sometimes you're going to see, you know, the county adding positions. They may be temporary positions, but they're important because as money comes down, big chunks of money, it takes bodies, it takes accountants, it takes uh, project managers, it takes contract managers to manage those dollars. Um, and we also want to, really importantly, we want to continue to accelerate the um, community-based recovery. Many people in this community know what's best for this community. So we want to make sure that we have resources and that they have technical support and um, other resources to help them move that forward. Um, in the long term, um, these decisions are going to need to, they're, they're complex. So they're going to require good information. So we're working hard, and we have been since the eruption started at compiling uh, data and information. And that's going to continue. It's going to be a continuous, ongoing process. One of the most important parts of that data collection is what does the community want? So we're reaching out deeply into the community, engaging with small groups of people to find out what people want. Um, we're working on a risk uh, assessment and vulnerability analysis. We expected that to be out already, but it's still taking some time. Um, we've got uh, great resource people uh, that are um, the technical skills and, and the scientific background to, uh, to put that together. Um, we're launching a, an economic recovery plan. That we're going to be out talking to businesses. Not only what, do you, what happened to you, 
what do you need now, but what about the future? What could be the best possible future for Puna, for Pahoa, for the island as a whole? So we're going to be working on that. And this all will be encompassed into an overall recovery strategy as we move forward, okay? So again, information is needed. It's going to inform and support um, good decision makings. De good decision making for both families, businesses, communities, and for government. And we really do need this because we are, um, we're seeing resources start to flow to the county and to communities. Um, we're going to see more resources come to various areas and we need to be able to make good decisions based on, on um, what we all want for the future. And really with the outcome being a more resilient island. Um, as I say, that no decisions have been made, okay, on much of this other than short-term initiatives. Um, I also want to note that this week in the news was a big announcement from our congressional um, uh, delegation or, base, or more specifically um, Senator Schatz about um, uh, $66.8 million coming down to the state of Hawaii. Okay, number one. <laughs> That money is not all going to come to Hawaii because some of it was is uh, designated by Congress to go to Kauai and Oahu for the flooding and uh, landslide events there. Um, it does not include Hurricane Lane, so that's that's off the table for this disaster. There may be other appropriations that support that. Um, this appropriation, we don't know the details yet. We're waiting for a Federal Register notice to come out. Um, but when it does, it'll, it'll give more guidance as to what areas these resources can go to. Um, and that can include um, rebuilding homes, and we don't know if that means actual construction of homes or just infrastructure to support homes. It can help to um, rebuild infrastructure, lost roads, parks, um, water lines. Um, it can support affected businesses. Um, in terms of adjusting job losses, um, impacts to, from tax revenues, job training, workforce development, um, and maybe even some loans and grants. We'll see. We'll see what gets lifted up out of that, um, what's allowed. Um, what's allowed by Congress and HUD, the Housing and Urban Development, and then um, we have to put together an action plan, and we will be doing that in conjunction with the voices that we've been hearing throughout Puna and to some degree the larger island, we'll be incorporating some of the other fact finding that we've been doing. Um, and then we will go back out and we will ask you as a community, what do you think of this action plan? And then we'll submit that to, Cong I'm not Congress, but HUD, Housing and Urban Development for approval. And if they approve, then we can start working on implementation. So. This is a big pot of money potentially. Again, we don't know how what share Hawaii County will get, but it's a potential um, source of revenue that we can work on to start the rebuilding process and recovery. So again, it's it's a long-term process. Um, we want to continue to engage the community and just thank you all for coming up. And Thanks, Diane. So uh, next on the agenda is an uh, update with access. I think Jordan covered up the, the bulk of that. But as an FYI, I just wanted to let everyone know we, we do have about 250 uh, uh, residents that's on the list that's at, at using our access, uh, of which about 20 are minor, they're children. Uh, but so it's a pretty, pretty good uh, amount of folks that, that are allowed to go back home. So for, for now then, uh, we're done with the updates. We, we'll break up into our groups and help us back there in the counties there and we're here if you got any uh, mm -hmm. detailed questions. Mm -hmm.